Hi, welcome to ACE Online. Myself, Krishna Reddy, faculty of ACE Engineering Academy of Power Systems. Okay. Now, let us try to discuss about uh, protection of uh, power system network from over voltages. So, how do you protect uh, the system from over voltages? Okay. First, let us see what do you mean by voltage surge? Voltage surge means what? So, voltage surge in the power system network is nothing but sudden rise in voltage for very short duration on the power system network. Sudden rise in voltage for very short duration on the power system network is nothing but voltage surge or we can also call it as transient voltage. So, if we observe the voltage surge waveform, so, in this case, the voltage buildup is taking place on y axis and uh, time is taken on x axis. So, here the voltage buildup is taking place from 0 to maximum, this is known as wave front, and the time taken from 0 to maximum value is known as raise time. From the beginning of the surge to peak value, it is known as raise time. And uh, time taken from the maximum value to decaying half of the maximum value, kep, that is nothing but T2. Okay. So, what are the causes of over voltage? Why the over voltage coming into picture? Why the over voltage is coming into picture? These are the reasons. Mainly, we can say that there are two causes one is internal cause, and the other one is external causes. So, what are the reasons for internal causes? We can say that switching surges, insulation failure, arcing ground, these are the reasons for internal cause. One is switching surge, insulation failure and arcing ground as well as resonance condition. These are the internal causes. And what are the external causes of over voltage? That is lightning effect. Lightning is one of the important reason for over voltage. Okay. So, switching surges, insulation failure, arcing ground and resonance come under what internal causes of voltage, over voltage and lightning effect will come under the external cause of over voltage. So, now let us observe here, let us observe a question like this. Generally, these type of questions are asked in PSUs. The over voltage surges in power system may be caused by, what is asking? The over voltage surges in power system may be caused by lightning, resonance, switching, all the above. So, if we observe here, so we have the over voltages due to what? Switching surge, insulation failure, arcing ground, resonance and lightning. So, all the above will be the right option here because due to lightning we will experience over voltage, resonance and switching will have over voltage. So, the right option is what? All the above. So, we can say that answer is option D. Okay. Now, let us observe. What do you mean by lightning actually? Lightning means what? So, let us observe the statement here. An electric discharge between cloud and earth. Electric discharge between cloud and earth or between the clouds. Electric discharge between cloud and earth or between the clouds or between the charge centers of the same cloud also. It is known as what? Uh, lightning. Okay. Electric discharge between what? Cloud and earth or between two clouds or between the charge centers of the same cloud. Also, we can call it as what? Lightning. Okay. So, lightning is nothing but electric discharge between cloud and earth or between two clouds or between the charge centers of the same cloud we can call it as what? Lightning. Okay. Now, so lightning results in what? It is a huge spark caused by electric discharge taking place between what? So, let us observe this question. Lightning is a huge spark caused by electric discharge taking place between option A, clouds or within the same cloud, option D, sorry, option C is cloud and earth, option D, any of the above. So, as per our definition, if you observe here, it is a discharge between cloud and earth or between two clouds or between the charge centers of the same cloud also. 
So, or any of the above will be the answer. Okay. Now, the protection for the system against lightning. How can we protect the system from lightning? So, how can we protect the system for lightning? Here we have different schemes. One is earthing screen we can use and the other one is overhead ground wires. Third one is lightning arrestor or surge diverter. So, we have three different mechanisms. One is earthing screen, overhead ground wires and the other one is lightning arrestor or surge diverter. Now, let us look at them one by one. First, let us observe earthing screen. Where the earthing screen is used? So, if you observe the power stations and substations, they will have a costly equipment. If you observe a generating station, we have transformers, generators, breakers, all these are very, very costly equipment. Okay? So, power stations and substations have expensive equipment. Okay? They are to be protected from lightning strokes by providing the earth ring screen. So, power stations and substations are protected from the lightning strokes by using what? Earthing screen. What does it consist of? It is nothing but, it consists of a network of copper conductors generally called as shield or screen mounted, this earthing screen is mounted on or the electrical equipment in the substation or power station. Okay? Earthing screen will be mounted on the equipment, electrical equipment in substation or power station. Okay. And this shield is properly connected to ground. Okay. At least uh, two points we are going to ground them. So that whenever lightning hits this earthing screen, it is to be discharged to ground. Okay. So what happens on the occurrence of direct stroke on the station? Whenever there is a, a lightning stroke that is taking place on the station, the screen provides at least a least resistance path. So the lightning will be discharged to ground. So, whenever the lightning hits the station, it is to be discharged to ground. That can be done by using this earthing screen. So, where the earthing screen is used? In power stations as well as substations. So, what is the limitation of this earthing screen? What is the limitation? So, it will provide the protection from light, direct lightning stroke, but from traveling waves it cannot provide. Okay? So, it will not provide protection against traveling waves. It will not provide the pro protection against uh, traveling waves. Okay? So, which may raise the equipment in the station and it may damage the equipment. Okay? That is a drawback or limitation of earthing screen. Okay? Now, let us go for the next one. That is overhead ground wires. Where the overhead ground wire is used? So, if you observe a, a transmission line it consists of a line supporter like this. This is a line supporter. To this line supporter, we have a cross arm connected. So, if you go for a three phase system, there will be three cross arms connected like this. And uh, to these cross arms, the insulator will be attached. One end of the insulator is connected to the cross arm. And to the other end, we are going to connect the power conductors. Okay? So, as we are doing the power transmission in an overhead manner, why? Because if you go for underground cables, the cost of insulation will be more because insulation is required throughout the length of the line. If you go for overhead transmission line, insulator is required only at the line supporter. For the remaining length, air acts as the insulation. So, here, how do you protect this transmission line from direct lightning stroke? Here, we will be running a earth wire or ground wire. Earth wire or we can also call it as ground wire. Earth wire or ground wire is run from the top of the tower. So, whenever the lightning takes place, it hits the topmost power conductor. That is nothing but earth wire or ground wire and it is being discharged to ground. So, this lightning is not allowed into the phase conductors. So, lightning will not be allowed into the phase conductors. 
So it will be discharged into the ground because lightning hits the topmost conductor. Okay, it is providing the least resistance path. Okay. So here, if you observe this overhead ground wire, what does it done? So the most effective method for providing the protection to the transmission lines. Where to use this overhead ground wires? In protection of transmission lines against what? Direct lightning strokes. Okay, it provides a protection from direct lightning strokes by using what? Overhead ground wire. Generally, if you observe, these ground wires are placed above these phase conductors. Okay, so ground wires are placed above the line conductors such that uh, practically the lightning strokes uh, will be intercepted by them. So whenever the lightning hits, uh, it, in, it uh, will be hitting the topmost conductor that is nothing but earth wire or ground wire. So if you observe a pictorial view, okay, so this is a protection angle that is going to be done and these are the phase conductors and this is a line supporter. Okay. Now, so these ground wires are grounded at each tower or a pole so that it will have as low resistance as possible. Okay? So if you provide the low resistance only, the tower potential will not raise. If you are not providing the low resistance, the tower potential will raise and it may result in failure of insulation again. Okay? That is to be kept in mind. Okay? The degree of protection provided by the ground wire depends on the footing resistance of the tower. Okay? Tower footing resistance should be as low as possible so that it can be easily discharged to water, ground. Okay? So tower footing resistance should be low. And the shielding angle, okay? shielding angle that is nothing but the angle subtended by the outermost line conductor and the ground wire and the lower, lower the angle and greater the protection. Shielding angle should be low or high. Shielding angle should be low for greater protection shielding angle should be low and tower footing resistance should be also low. Okay? So this is about uh, overhead ground wire. What are the advantages? So it will provide almost protection, complete protection we can get. Provide considerable protection against direct lightning strokes on the transmission lines. So if you observe transmission line, there will be a ground wire running from the top of the tower. Okay? So that will provide the protection from what? Uh, direct lightning stroke. Okay, and it provides the damping effect on the, if there is any disturbance traveling along the line as it acts as a short circuited secondary. So it will also provide the damping effect. Apart from that, it uh, provides certain amount of electrostatic shielding also it will provide from external fields. These are the advantages. Main advantage is it provides the protection for direct lightning strokes. What are the disadvantages? You require this conductor throughout the length of the line. So automatically it takes additional cost. Cost will be increased. Yes or no? And the other disadvantage is, suppose if this uh, ground wire gets braked and it touches the phase conductor, unnecessarily it will create a fault. Okay? So there is a possibility of breaking and falling across the line conductors causing a short circuit fault. So how do you overcome that? So if you are going for using a high strength uh, conductor for overhead ground wire, that is by galvanized steel standard ground wires are used. Galvanized steel ground wires are used. It will provide the sufficient strength. Okay? So this is about uh, overhead ground wire. So now let us observe a question here. Overhead ground wire are used to protect. Where to use this overhead ground wire? Overhead ground wires are used to protect the transmission line against what? So it will provide the protection against line to ground fault or arcing earths or voltage surges due to direct lightning stroke or high voltage oscillations due to switching. So observe this question carefully. Overhead ground wire is used to protect the transmission lines from Voltage surges due to direct lightning stroke. Voltage surges due to what? Direct lightning stroke. Okay. Now let us go for the important point that is lightning arrester. Where do you use this lightning arrester and what is the purpose of lightning arrester? Let us look into the details. 
So if you observe the earthing screen and uh, overhead ground wire will protect the system from direct lightning stroke, but they will not protect the system from traveling waves. They will not protect the system from traveling waves. So that is done by lightning arrester. Okay, if you observe here, the earthing screen and ground wires will protect the electrical system against direct lightning strokes but fail to protect against what? Traveling waves. Okay. This traveling waves reaches the apparatus, it may get damaged. Okay. So the lightning arresters or we can also call them as what? Surge diverters provide the protection against uh, traveling waves, we can say that. Okay. Now let us look at the basic view of a lightning arrester. Okay, lightning arrestor or a surge diverter which conducts high voltage surges on the power system to ground. Whenever there is a high voltage surge on the power system, it is to be discharged to ground. That can be done by lightning arrestor. Okay, so this is the basic view of a lightning arrestor. It consists of a spark gap in series with a light uh, in series with a nonlinear resistor. Okay, so whenever there is a high voltage surge. So this gap gets conducted and it is discharged to ground. Okay, this is the basic view of a lightning arrestor we can say. So what it consists of? It consists of what? A spark gap in series with a nonlinear resistor. Okay. So if you observe one end of this diverter is connected to the line circuit and the other end is being grounded. One is connected to the line circuit and the other will be grounded. So what are the different types of uh, lightning arresters that we have? Okay, what are the different types? We have five different types. One is rod gap type arrestor. The second one is horn gap type arrestor. Third one is multi gap type arrestor. Fourth one is expulsion type arrestor. Fifth one is wall type arrestor. These are the different types of lightning arrestors. Okay. Now let us look at them one by one. So here let us observe one question first. Which of the following is a protective device against lightning over voltages? So which will act as a protective device here? Rod gaps, surge absorbers and horn gaps. All this will act uh, as a protection for lightning over voltages. Okay? Now let us go for the rod gap type arrestor. So if you observe the rod gap type arrestor, it consists of two rods. Generally, there will be two rods which are bent at right angles. Two rods which are bent at right angles to each other. Okay, That will form a rod gap. So it consists of two 1.5 centimeters rods which are bent at right angles, gap in between. Okay, So what happens here? One, sorry. If you observe, one rod is connected to the line and the other rod is connected to the ground other rod will be connected to the ground okay or earth here the distance between gap and insulator must not be less than one third of the gap length observe this statement the distance between the gap and insulator must not be less than one third of the gap length why so that arc will not reach the insulator and damage it so this distance here should not be less than one third of the gap length, okay, this P, okay, that is to be maintained. Here what happens in case of rod gap type arrestor, whenever there is an voltage surge, whenever there is an voltage surge, this gap gets conducted and arc is initiated and it is being discharged to ground. But the limitation in case of rod gap type arrestor is, arc continues to exist even after the surge is over arc continues to exist even after the surge is over. So that is the limitation. Okay. So what is the limitation? After the surge is over, the arc in the gap is maintained by the normal supply voltage leading to short circuit on the system. So if the arc is maintaining even after the surge has been completed, it will create a short circuit path that is not desired. Okay. Arc is to be cleared once the surge is completed, the arc is to be cleared. Okay. And whenever the excessive current flows through these rods, the rods may get melted down okay, due to excessive heat generation. So rods may get melted down 
whenever the excessive heat is produced. And uh, the performance of this depends on the climatic conditions, that is rain, humidity, all this will affect the performance of what? Rod gap type arrestor. And here the polarity of the surge is also affecting the performance of the arrestor. All these are what? Uh, limitations of rod gap type arrestor. Okay. So, due to these limitations, we are not using it as a primary protection, it is used as what? Backup protection. Rod gap type arrestor is used as a backup protection. Now, let us look over the next one, that is horn gap type arrestor. Okay, if you observe, uh, horn gap type arrestor, it consists of two horns, one is A and the other one is B. Generally, these two horns are... Uh, posted on the insulators, placed over the insulators like this. So, one rod is connected to the apparatus that is to be protected and the other rod is connected to ground. Okay. So, here this rod is in series with what? Choke coil and resistance. So, if you observe a horn gap type arrestor construction, it consists of what? Two horn shaped metal rods, A and B, separated by a small air gap. Okay, so what happens? The horns are so constructed, distance between them gradually increase towards the top. Okay, so here the distance between the two horns is gradually increasing towards the top. So now one end of the horn is connected to what line that is to be protected through choke coil and resistance. Okay, and the other one is grounded. What is the purpose of resistance? Why the resistance is used here? why the resistance is used. Let us look at that here. The resistance helps in limiting the flow of current to a small value. Flow of current to a small value. It limits the flow of current. And here, if you observe, the choke coil inductive reactance will be what? Xl is omega L. That is 2 pi F into L. Whenever the high frequency suggest takes place, whenever the frequency is high, what happens? Uh, the inductive reactance will be high. When frequency is low, it will develop the low inductive reactance. Okay? So, whenever there is a surge taking place on the line, so the gap between these two rods get conducted like this, arc is formed, and it continues its path through 1, 2, and 3, and it gets finally extinguished. Okay? It will not continue to exist. It will not continue to exist. Okay. Here arc is self-clearing. Under normal conditions, the gap is not conducting, but uh, whenever there is an over voltage or whenever there is a surge, it will initiate uh, the gap. Okay. On normal condition, it will not any there will not be any arc initiation, but on occurrence of over voltage, the spark takes place across the small gap. And the heated air around the arc and the magnetic effect. Uh, cause the arc to move along this gap, it moves along this gap like this and it will finally extinguished. Okay? So, this is the operation of what? Horn gap type uh, arrestor. Okay? What are the advantages? Here, the arc is self-clearing, arc is self-clearing. Okay? And the series resistance helps to limit the flow of current to a small value. Okay? These two are what? Advantages. But what are the limitations? What are the limitations of this uh, horn gap type arrestor? Suppose if any external agency birds are bridging the gap between the two horns, so it will affect the performance of the arrestor. So the bridging of gap by external agency, uh, it will affect the performance of the arrestor. Okay? And due to corrosion and pitting, the performance of the arrestor gets affected as they are exposed to atmosphere. If it is resulting in corrosion or pitting, so it will result in uh, what? The performance of the arrestor will be affected. And here, the main drawback is the time of operation is very long. That is, it is taking around 3 seconds. It is taking around 3 seconds. That is the drawbacks in case of what? Horn gap type arrestors. So, these limitations are listed out. Due to these limitations, these 
arresters are used only in second line of defense, not on first line of defense. Second line of defense like rod gap type arresters only we are going to use this. Okay. Now let us go for the next one that is multi gap type arrester. So now let us look at this multi gap type arrester. It consists of uh, cylinders like this and uh, one cylinder is directly connected to the line that is to be protected and the other is being grounded through the series resistance to limit the current. So by conducting this uh, series resistance, now the potential of this C degree of protection gets reduced. So in order to improve that, we are using this shunted resistance in case of what uh, multi gap type arresters. Okay? If you observe, it consists of what? Series of metallic cylinders insulated from one another, small intervals of air gap. One is connected directly to the line and the other is grounded through series resistance. So if you observe the cylinder A is connected to the line that is to be protected and the cylinder C is being grounded through what? Series resistance. So why the purpose of series resistance is what? Series resistance limits the power of the arc. So but by inclusion of this series resistance, the degree of protection against traveling waves gets reduced. Okay, in order to overcome that, again we are using a shunt resistance to overcome the degree of protection that is being reduced due to the inclusion of a series resistance. Okay? So these arresters are normally used in the voltages that does not exceed 33 kV. Okay? So what happens whenever there is an over voltage? So whenever there is an voltage surge, directly gap between A and B gets conducted like this gap between A and B gets connected and B and C is shunted directly. Okay? It is not going through path uh, through this shunt resistance and it will be discharged to ground. Once the surge is completed, so now the path for current will be like this. So once the surge is completed, initially it will take the path like this and uh, that, is not, that is not sufficient to maintain the arc and even this will get extinguished. Okay? So this is the operation in case of water multi gap type arrestor where they are used not up to what 33 kV. Multi gap type arresters are used up to what 33 kV. Now let us go for the next one that is expulsion type arresters. Where the expulsion types of arresters are used and what is the other name for this let us observe here. So this even this expulsion type arresters they are also called as what? protector tube type arresters. They are also known as protector tube type arresters used up to 33 kV. So if you observe the constructional view of this expulsion type arrestor, it is the extension of rod gap type arrestor. The main drawback in rod gap type arrestor is what? Their arc is not self clearing. But here the arc will be self clearing. So this is the extension of what? Rod gap type arrestor. It consists of rod gap, let it be A and A dash. A and A dash, this is the rod gap. Okay. Whenever there is a lightning hitting on this line, so what happens? This gap gets conducted. This gap gets conducted and uh, between the bottom electrodes also there will be conduction taking place. Arc is initiated between these two electrodes also. So whenever the arc is formed in this internal tube, what happens? Heat will be generated. Due to the heat, uh, this fiber will be vaporized. Whenever the fiber vaporizes, it will develop the neutral gas. So that neutral gas will develop the pressure and it will be expelled out from this bottom electrode. So that will remove the ionization particles of that arc and it will get uh, extinguished. Arc will not maintain. So here arc is self-clearing in case of what? Uh, expulsion type of arresters. Okay? So it consists of a rod gap in series with what? Uh, second gap within fiber tube. So here fiber tube, if you observe, there are two electrodes. Upper electrode is connected to the rod gap and the other one is connected to earth. So this is the operating mechanism. What are the advantages? Advantage is they are not very expensive. These type of arresters are not so expensive, we can say. They are improved version of what? 
This is the improved version of a rod gap type arrester. Improved version of rod gap type arrester is nothing but what? Expulsion type of arrester. Improved version of rod gap type arrester is what? Expulsion type of arrester. Okay. Now, they can be easily installed. These are the advantages. But on the other side, what is the disadvantage here? Due to the formation of arc, this fiber is being vaporized. So we can use for only limited application. We can use this arrester for only limited applications only we can use. So what are the limitations? Let us list out here. Observe. So expulsion type arrester perform only limited number of operations. They can perform only limited number of operations because that fiber material is getting vaporized. Okay. And uh, this is, it is developing neutral gas. So we cannot uh, enclose uh, this arrester. Okay, this type of arrester is not used for enclosed equipment due to discharge of gases. Here neutral gas is being developed. So that's why we are not going to use this in uh, enclosed areas. Okay, and the last one is the poor old time pair characteristic of this arrester is not suitable for expensive equipment. If you, we we cannot uh, recommend this for expensive equipment. Okay. Now coming to the last one, that is the wall type arrester. So if you observe the wall type arrester, it consists of what? Non-linear resistors okay, and uh, spark gaps. Okay, mainly the series of spark gaps will be there and the other one is non-linear resistor discs will be used. So this non-linear resistor discs are made up of thyroid material. So if you observe the wall type arrester, spark gaps and grading resistance will be there and set of non-linear resistors will be there. So this spark gap consists of multiple uh, assembly of spark gaps. Okay. So if you observe the spark gap, there will be two electrodes like this. Spark gap, there will be two electrodes with a fixed gap spacing. So between the spark gaps, the voltage distribution is being linearized by using grading resistors. Why the grading resistors are used here? The voltage distribution across the gap is to be linearized by using what? Grading resistors across the gaps. So here the nonlinear elements are connected in series with these spark gaps. So both the assemblies are uh, accommodated in a tight porcelain container. So they are placed in a tight porcelain container. These nonlinear discs are made up of what material? Inorganic compound such as thyroid or metrosyl, we can say. Okay. What are the advantages of uh, wall type arrester? So they provide effective protection against uh, over voltages, we can say, or surges. They operate very rapidly, sir. They will take less than a second. They will take less than a second. And impulse ratio is practically unity. Impulse ratio is practically unity. Okay. These are the advantages. They are the limitations also. Okay. What are the limitations? They may fail to check the surges, steep wavefront from reaching the terminal operators. Okay. So which are having very steep wavefront, they may reach the terminal operators. They may fail to check. This is one of the limitation. And adversely affected by environmental condition. That is, if moisture enters into the enclosure, so its uh, performance will be affected. These two are the limitations. Now, what are the applications? What are the applications of uh, wall type arresters are here? So, generally, if you observe, so the wall type arresters are of two types. One is station type arrester, and the other one is what? Line type arrester. So, this uh, station type arrester is used up to 220 kV. 220 kV or even higher, we can go for this uh, station type arresters. Line type are used up to 66 kV. Line type arresters are used up to 66 kV. Station type arresters are used up to 220 kV. Okay. So now let us observe a question here. Wall type lightning arrester in a substation should be placed. Where you should place the lightning arrester? Close to a circuit breaker, close to a transformer, away from the transformer, none. Always observe. Lightning arrester should be placed 
very close to the transformer. Okay. Lightning arrestor should be placed very close to the transformer. Okay, so that if any surge takes place, it will not enter into the transformer and the transformer is the costliest equipment. So here, so wall type lightning arrestor in a substation should be placed very close to water transformer. Okay, like this, uh, some short questions will be asked in the PSUs like Genco, Transco, Discoms. Okay. So now let us go for the next one that is surge absorber. This traveling waves are uh, set up on the network, if you observe, if they enter into the terminal equipment like transformer or generator, they will get damaged. Okay, transformer or generator will get damaged. So here, this uh, surge absorber, what does it do? So in order to reduce the steepness of the wave front, okay, the steepness of the wave front. Uh, is reduced by using what? A surge absorber. Okay. The steepness of the traveling wave front is reduced by using what? Surge absorber. Okay. So surge absorber is a protective device which reduces the steepness of wave front by absorbing the surge energy. Kya kar rahe? This will absorb the surge energy. And surge diverter function is what? Surge diverter kya karte? Surge ko discharge kar jate, divert to ground. Okay. So surge diverter diverts the surge to earth, but surge absorber absorbs the surge energy. A difference is surge diverter diverts the surge to earth, surge absorber absorbs the surge energy. Okay. Abhi dekhin. So here if you observe, what are the different types of uh, surge absorbers we have? We have condenser. So if you observe this condenser type here, so what is the capacity reactance? Xc is what? 1 by omega c. That is 1 by 2 pi f into c. For normal frequency, whenever the frequency is low, it will offer high reactance. But for high frequencies, whenever the high frequency surge takes place, capacity reactance offered will be low. And it will be absorbed. The surge is being absorbed by that capacitor. So this is condenser. And the other type of surge absorber is, it consists of what? A choke and resistance connected in series with the line. Choke and resistance are in parallel. So what is the capacitive inductive reactance? XL is omega L, that is 2 pi F into L. So whenever the high frequency surge takes place, what happens? Uh, the inductive reactance offered will be more. Inductive reactance offered will be more. And it will be diverting to this, uh, it will be allowing through the resistance. For normal frequency, it will offer low impedance. So it will absorb the surge power. Okay. And the another type of surge absorber is the important one, that is the Ferranti, sub uh, Ferranti type of surge absorber. So it consists of an inductor, air core inductor will be there. So if you observe Ferranti surge absorber, air core inductor, connected in series with the line and the inductor is surrounded by an insulated earthed metallic sheet. So the metallic sheet which we have shown, this will act as a dissipator. Metallic sheet which we have shown will act as a dissipator. Okay. So this is an equivalent to what? The Ferrandi type of surge absorber equivalent to what? Transformer short circuited secondary. Okay. This arrangement is an equivalent to transformer short circuited second. Where to use this uh, Ferranti type surge absorber? These are mainly used in production of what? Transformer. Okay. This type of arresters are mainly used in production of transformers. Okay. So with this I conclude my session. So I have given a brief overview of uh, protection from over voltages. We have discussed about a thin screen, overhead ground wires and uh, lightning arresters as well as surge absorbers. Okay. So I thank you all for giving me this opportunity.